Great. So yeah, so first up, we're going to talk about the Pluto. So you'll hear me. Is the mic picking up? Yeah. Great. So the motivation for this trial uh, was the problem of perioperative electrolyte and acid base imbalance, which is quite common in children receiving kidney transplants. Uh, at the moment, in our current clinical proto protocol, we check bloods postoperatively every two hours um, because we've had previous issues with children suffering severe clinical sequelae from very marked very dramatic electrolyte uh, and acid base abnormalities perioperatively. And one of the key factors that contributes um, to this uh, is the large volume of intravenous fluid that we administer to these children, to these pediatric kidney transplant recipients. So the aim of this uh, randomized clinical trial uh, was to compare clinically significant plasma electrolyte and acid base abnormalities with plasma light 148 fluid versus standard intravenous fluids. So the intervention in this study is plasma light 148. That's the fluid on the left here. It's a balanced isotonic crystalloid fluid. Balanced, it has 140 millimoles per liter of sodium, 98 millimoles per liter of chloride. So in normal saline is 154 millimoles per liter of sodium and 154 millimoles per liter of chloride. So a lot of excess chloride relative to our plasma. But this fluid, as the name suggests, can 140 of sodium and 98 of chloride. So it's balanced to plasma. It's buffered with gluconate and acetate, so it has a physiological pH of 7.4. Uh, it also contains a few other electrolytes, five millimoles per liter of potassium, which always worries pediatric, well, sometimes worries pediatric neurologists, at three millimoles per liter of magnesium. Um, so it mirrors very closely the electrolyte composition of, of plasma, which is why it's called plasmolite. That's the intervention. So plasmolite 148, both intraoperatively uh, and postoperatively for the first 72 hours. And the comparator was the usual mix of intravenous solutions that are used. And that varies between different uh, pediatric transplant centers in UK, and it varies between different clinicians and different anaesthetists. Um, and it includes uh, Hartman's solution, Ringer's lactate, human albumin solution, 0.45% um, sodium chloride solutions with varying concentrations of dextrose, 0.9% sodium chloride solution, uh, and sometimes um, colloid solutions as well. So that was the comparator. Any combination of those fluids, just follow your usual standard practice. All other aspects of transplant care were the same. So we screened 238 children um, between June 2020 and August 2022. Uh, and between the nine children's transplant centers in UK that took part in, the, in this clinical trial, we randomized 144 children, 144 pediatric kidney transplant recipients. We randomized them on the day of transplant. Six of them didn't actually go ahead to transplant because of last minute changes or complications. Um, but 138 of them did, 69 in each arm of the trial. So our primary outcome was acute hyponatremia, one of the most clinically important electrolyte abnormalities that we see perioperatively, because it lead, can lead to cerebral edema uh, and death, and has led to death in some cases. As you can see here in this, uh, this dot plot, which shows the lowest plasma sodium concentration of each participant uh, in the standard fluids group on the left and the plasma light group on the right, there was no statistically significant difference in acute hyponatremia uh, between standard fluids and plasma light. There was a numerical difference, but it wasn't statistically significant. And we found that in the primary modified intention to treat analysis. So that's an analysis that included all randomized transplanted participants, and that was adjusted for three different factors. Uh, we confirmed that on a per protocol analysis, uh, only including children that were treated per the letter of the protocol, because there were a few deviations. Uh, an unadjusted analysis uh, and an, a, a sensitivity analysis that included both plasma and blood gas um, results and further sensitivity analyses that subgrouped um, the control arm into those that received different proportions of normal saline versus hypotonic solutions. So no statistically significant difference in hyponatremia between the two groups. 
Important secondary outcomes, one was an excessive rate of reduction of plasma sodium concentration, and we defined that as a drop of uh, more than one millimole per litre per hour, averaged over six hours. There were two of those events in the standard fluids group, one in the plasma light group. Excessive magnitude of reduction of plasma sodium, that's a drop of more than 10 millimoles per litre from the pre-transplant level within the perioperative period. Five of those events in the standard fluid group none in the plasma light group but because of the small number of events uh, we couldn't really do a statistical comparison but they were numerically different and you can decide whether you for yourselves whether you feel that's clinically important or not so no difference then when we look at a forest plot um, which just kind of summarizes the, the significance and the confidence of these outcomes for the primary outcome there was a numerical but no statistically significant reduction in acute hyponatremia. Interestingly, we saw a little bit more hypernatremia in the plasma light group than in the standard fluids group. Uh, there were no adverse clinical events associated with that, but nevertheless, a little bit more hypernatremia. Probably the most striking of the secondary outcomes uh, were non iron gap, metabolic acidosis, and hyperchloremia. Uh, they were very different with plasma light 148 uh, than with standard fluids. A 91% reduction in odds of acid perioperative acidosis uh, with plasma light compared to standard fluids, uh, and an 83% reduction in the odds of hyperchloremia with the intervention versus standard fluids. Hypomagnesemia, as you'd expect, uh, was less frequent with plasma light. It contains three millimoles per liter of magnesium. We wanted to um, assess in one of the secondary outcomes the, uh, the in intensity of medical intervention needed perioperatively. As I say, we do two hourly blood tests. We're always looking at them. We're changing and adjusting the fluids in our standard practice. We wanted to quantify that in some way. So we looked at the number of fluid changes in each arm, uh, and that was significantly lower in, in the plasma light arm than in the standard fluids group. Serious adverse events related to electrolyte abnormalities, 44 in the standard care arm versus 18 in the plasma light arm. Assessing for SAEs, we included both blood gas and plasma results. So that's why these figures are slightly different from the outcome measures that we looked at earlier. So all of these SAEs included anything that we would act on, whether it's a blood gas or a plasma result. So 19 acute severe hyponatremia events with standard fluids, uh, either at an excessive rate of reduction or an excessive magnitude of reduction versus three with plasma light. 25 severe hyperkalemia, that's potassium more than 6.5 millimoles per litre. 25 of those events in the standard care group versus 15 with plasma light. Remember, plasma light contains five millimoles per litre of potassium, but there was less hyperkalemia with plasma light. We can talk about why that might be if you want. Um, that was the hypothesis, but that was borne out in, in the results and definitely in the SAE data. Um, and, and a comparable num total number of electrolyte related SAEs between the two treatment arms. So to conclude then, what do we find from Pluto? For, so for children receiving kidney transplants, <clears throat> excuse me, compared to standard intravenous fluids, perioperative plasma light 148 fluid didn't statistically significant reduce the number of participants who experienced acute hyponatremia. We saw slightly more hypernatremia, but no significant differences in the risk of high potassium hyperkalemia. There was markedly less perioperative hyperchloremia and metabolic acidosis and fewer changes to the, the fluid prescription. One fluid intraoperatively and postoperatively for a stable, safe um, plasma electrolyte profile. And that was Pluto. Uh, this is the team. Obviously, a trial like this across nine different sites, randomizing 144 children receiving kidney transplants in a two-year period requires a lot of collaboration uh, and a big multi-professional team. Um, and this is the team that, that worked together and collaborated to, to deliver this trial. 
happy to take any questions on that. Joseph, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, um, what was the mean lowest sodium in the two groups? Because if you look at the two groups, it, it looked like there were more lower ones in, well, now I forget which group it was. The standard fluid. In the standard fluid. I'm just wondering, I mean, it wasn't one of your outcomes, but I just wonder what, did, did you, you must have that. The... We, we, we want to do this trial rigorously and properly, so we, we, we only looked at the outcomes that we pre-specified, and we didn't pre-specify a numerical yeah. mean um, difference in both groups so we didn't analyze that it would be interesting to have a look and probably do that but we didn't report it because we didn't pre-specify sure, that sure. um, but we could look at it as a as a sort of yeah exploratory um, ad hoc um, analysis interesting to me I mean I don't know what what you feel um, and clearly we we can't attribute any significance to these results because the numbers are small but I think it's clinically interesting that excessive magnitude of reduction in plasma sodium and excessive rate appear to be numerically less in the plasma light arm. That might sort of relate to what fluids are being used and like do you know, you must know, like what percentage of patients in the standard group are getting half normal saline versus normal saline and is that part of the problem? Yeah, yeah we have that data. Um, but interestingly, <clears throat> all that we pre-specified with respect to um, granulating that analysis in terms of the type of fluid received in the standard fluid arm was this subgroup analysis which divided participants that received more than half or less than half by volume of isotonic fluid of normal saline. Um, and we only pre-specified that for the primary analysis, not for these, these secondary analyses. Um, but there was no statistically significant, you know, P of 0.5. <laughs> but again, the numbers get smaller when you're looking at the subgroup analyses. It may well be underpowered for that. There's no limit to your trial, so do you want to tell us about limits? <laughs> Any other questions on Pluto? Okay. So I can give you a brief flavor of, of the plans for the next randomized control trial. Uh, that we're all collaborating on, uh, working up together. Um, so this is the limits trial. So Pluto looked at the question, what's, what's the safest type of fluid perioperatively for children receiving transplants? Limits is aiming to answer the question, what is the safest volume of fluid for children to receive perioperatively? Um, because between different hospitals, between different clinicians, uh, there's a high degree of variability establish that um, with a survey and, and looking at some historical data over the last few years, certainly within the UK. Um, and so we're going to compare as the intervention, if, if this trial gets funded, a cap on both the time for the mil for mil urine output replacement and the amount of mil for mil urine output replacement. We're going to limit both of those factors in the intervention arm and compare that to standard practice um, with liberal, usual liberal volume of intravenous fluid administration. We did submit an initial grant application to the National Institute for Health Research um, Health Technology Assessment um, funding stream. That was turned down, and the feedback from the panel there was that they didn't feel that it was achievable. The numbers that we were, we were looking at a five-year study recruiting over 300 children. So we've scaled that down. We've looked, gone again to our patient and, and parent involvement group and looked at what really is a clinically significant difference to them in time in hospital, which would be the primary outcome for this trial. Uh, and we've gone for a slightly smaller three-year study uh, with 140 participants. Um, and that ranked very well in a, in a slightly different funding stream. So we're hoping to start that next year. Thank you very much. Well done.